So back at the beginning of July, Art Snacks was hosting this Build Your Own palette by Core Watercolors, and I thought, why not hop on the bandwagon? Because I love Core and I love their watercolors. And why not build a custom palette? Because it was really cheap. And so guess what? I did it. <laughs> Hi, it's me, your girl Katie, and welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna be opening this um package and we're just gonna make a painting with it and this apparently got thrown in the grass um yeah so it came with the watercolors some info a paintbrush and packing slip so it makes the unboxing a lot quicker <laughs> but let's get the stuff out of this bubble wrap out we have a princeton Glacier number two round brush. I actually have one of these, uh, but I really like this brush, so I'm always happy to have another one. So it's a really nice, just tiny, tiny little brush with a cool, clear handle. Uh, really love this brush, so I'm happy to have another one. Then we have a Core Watercolors sticker. They gave us a little lifesaver candy. And then we just have some information and a little thank you. Then we have the main event, which is the palette that come with the watercolors I chose. So let's go over them really quick. All of these tubes are five milliliter, just to kind of throw that out there. So first off, I grabbed a cobalt teal. This is one of my favorite watercolor colors, especially by this brand. Core makes my favorite version of this color, and I recently ran out, so guess what? I bought another one. <laughs> then we have Raw Sienna Natural, which is a very pretty sandy-esque color, and it's another color I just really love. Then we have a color I don't own, which is Cerulean Blue Chromium. So this is just a more rich, vibrant version of Cerulean Blue. We also have Permanent Alizarin Crimson. It's another one of my favorite types of colors. And I don't have any by Core, and I'm pretty sure I don't have any by anybody else, if I'm not mistaken. Then we have Neutral Tint. Now, Neutral Tint is a color that I really grabbed because I usually use Payne's Gray for my dark colors. I rarely ever use black, but I wanted something more neutral with less of a blue tone, so I grabbed a neutral tint. And lastly, I grabbed Coors Viridian Green because in the swatches and kind of here, um, it it's a Viridian Green that I've never used before, like a, the typing, and I just love the shade of it, so I grabbed it. So here is this little tiny set. It's a super quick unboxing, I know, but I just wanna go over the swatches and get to the illustration as fast as possible. Um, I just, I love Core. Uh, but another thing I wanted to show you is all these little mixing wells. So this is definitely a really good travel palette if you wanna take this traveling. You could pop like a little tiny brush in here and it would be a perfect travel palette. So, um, but yeah, anyway, let's go ahead and swatch these out and then I'll talk more about the paints and stuff over in the illustration. My Kickstarter is also now live for my Fantastic Vampires coloring book. If you wanna get any of these illustrations as a line art so you can color them, or uh, get an original, get stickers, get exclusive prints to the Kickstarter. Uh, I will have a link on the screen to where you can go check it out. I also have a video over on the Kickstarter page. We are now 66% funded. So we're basically two thirds of the way there. And if you wanna help me get funded, get an awesome book, maybe get some stretch goals, go head on over there and pledge. You can pledge pretty much any amount that'll get you in a reward. There's literally rewards from $2 to $60. So if you're interested in that, please please head on over and check it out. I would love to make this Kickstarter success with your help. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to squeeze these out into the little bubbles and I'm gonna use a lot more paint than I intended because that squeezed out and just kind of like kept going. Try and hope this one doesn't decide to do the same thing. And then I'm going to swatch them out after I get them all situated in these little cute bubbles. I know these are also mixing wells, but they kind of double as like paint storage wells, so I'm gonna use them like that. Look at that cobalt blue, oh, so, or cobalt teal, not cobalt blue, oh, it's so pretty. All right, so we have our colors all squeezed out. I feel like I haven't painted in watercolor in such a long time. Um, I did Fangtober, if you don't know about that, and I painted in ink for 31 days. And so it feels like an absolute eternity as I painted in watercolors. And I know they're not that different of a medium, but it still, feel, still feels like forever. 
All right, we're gonna make some cute little squid swatches. Also, I'm realizing I'm not talking over this, so apologies. Um, I think one of the colors I'm the most excited for, like, out of the new colors, is this Viridian Green, because it doesn't look like a traditional Viridian Green, or at least it didn't in the swatches that I saw. And keep in mind, I did buy these based on the swatches on the website, so there would have been discrepancies, I'm sure, just based on what my monitor was showing me. But... Um, I think that this looks like a fun color. Let's make these little tentacles a little longer here. I'm gonna darken this top part up just a bit. There we go. Now I'm sure not. this is not the ideal paper for watercolors. This is just kind of like my swatching <laughs> paper. I use this paper to swatch pretty much everything. It's almost like my little art journal, if you will. Not gonna lie, it's really fun to turn these little squids into swatches. <laughs> it's definitely not your average swatch. Let's do like a really like wide one. Kind of like one up here. Except we'll do the, the smaller tentacles. They almost look like jellyfish. <laughs> it's kind of what they remind me of when I start to do the swatches. But this isn't a plug or sponsorship or anything, but I do believe you can still get the core watercolors over on the Art Snacks website if you want to. Um, I, I know you can't do the build your own set anymore, but I'm sure you can get these individually. There we go. All the little squid swatches. Honestly, I feel like this is a really well-balanced set, honestly. Um, I do want... I might make a little mixing chart, but I don't really want to go crazy. Um, I might just mix a few colors together and see what they make. All right, so we've mixed a few of the colors together. It's certainly not a representation of the entire palette. It's mainly the moodier colors, like, that are mixed with some of the darker colors, but I really like that effect. So, yeah, I think... Um, I'm going to play around with this palette a little more probably off camera and then we're gonna come back and I'm gonna do something fun and illustrative, I think. I don't know yet. <laughs> also, before we actually get into the illustration, I need to let you guys know something really important. So this weekend is the very last weekend that you will be able to get all of my fall and Halloween goodies over on my store. So if you're interested in getting that stuff, there'll be a link on the screen. All of the things like my spooky squid washi tapes, my charms that we're relating to October or fall or whatever, um, they will be leaving. So if it's in the fall or Halloween tab, it will be gone on November 15th at 11.59 p.m. EST. So if you're interested in any of that stuff, go ahead on over and get the goods. If you're a patron, you'll get 20% off. Head on over there again and check it out just to make sure you don't miss anything. These will come back next year, but they will not be available for the rest of the year until next year uh, of spooky season. So make sure you don't miss out. All right, so it took me a while to figure out what I was going to do, but I know this month for my patrons, I'm actually doing a limited time offer. So if you're a patron $7 or more, which is the vampire squid or higher, you'll be getting a custom like little postcard greeting card and it'll actually come with like the little fun stuff on the back so you could actually send it if you wanted to. Um, and I was kind of doodling around with a couple other ones but I figured that would be really fun to share with you guys just how I do them. Um, I really am just kind of interested in wreaths and I know that quite a few of these colors really fit into the wintry theme so I thought it would be really fun to almost do a tutorial even though I'm not like a super expert at this so it's like a beginner's tutorial. Uh, so I'm gonna start out by making a really like just messy scribble here and it's 
a circle. Just give you a closer look. It's not, it's just really messy. It's not perfect at all. I'm going to actually have flowers in this one. So like my first wreath here was literally just leaves. Uh, my second one had flowers and this one is also gonna have flowers. So I'm gonna kind of plan ahead. Um, and what I mean by that is I'm going to put my flowers in first because they're gonna kind of be my focal point. Um, and I'm really aiming for roses here. I just really want some like fun roses. So I'm going to do like little tiny C curves. Um, and we're just going to play around with the paintbrush and pull whatever hair is at the end of this off. And we're just going to just make big fluffy marks. I'm not an expert at this, so it may be wrong or may look bad, uh, and that's okay because I'm just having fun with it, and if I don't like it, it's not going to be one that goes out to patrons, so, you know, and then I cleaned off my brush, and I'm just kind of like fuzzing out the edges of this to make it look more fun, and if I feel like they need a little bit more depth, like right here, I'm just going to tap in some more color and just let it do its thing. Um, I am going to also put in a little bit of foliage here, and I'm mixing this Viridian Green with the Chromium Blue, just a touch of that Chromium Blue, uh, and then I'm just going to use my brush mainly and just kind of like, just let it make a petal. Just using the brush itself is a really good way to make a petal. Oh, that's really pretty. I love these colors together. <gasps> it's so pretty. Anyway, uh, I'm going to do another one in here. Just to kind of get some of these leaves in here. Uh, I will be making more leaves as we go, but I just want to kind of get some of these in here real quick. All right. And it's also bleeding into the rows, and that is totally fine. It's kind of what I wanted, so... Alright, picking up more of this, like, it's kind of like a blushy pink. I mixed the Alizarin Crimson with the Raw Sienna, and it made a really pretty color. Um, now, I want this piece to kind of zigzag down, so I'm going to put another rose, like, right here. And again, I'm just making, like, little C curves, pushing my brush down using, basically using the pressure to my advantage here. And then once I get it to about here, I'm going to rinse off my brush and then go over the edges and kind of bleed them out. It's really fun to watch them flow. Ooh, that's really pretty. I feel like a professional and I'm just literally winging it. So I'm going to plop some more leaves in here. And that was a pretty good leaf, so I'm not. I want a second one right next to it. And I'm kind of turning my paper to help myself get some of these leaves in here. I'm going to get some more paint. I want to make sure it's not too blue because blue is not what I'm going for. I'm kind of going for a blue-green color. And then we'll pull one out right here. Ooh. I'm going to also make that a little bit more pointy. I don't know why these two didn't end up very pointy. I do feel like this ended up a little bit more dark than I wanted it to, so I'm going to pick out a little bit of color here. And then I'm going to put another rose down here at the bottom. However, I'm going to make this one a little smaller just because I don't want it to be as big. So we're only going to do the fluffy parts about that big because, again, I want it to be smaller. Then I was going to take my brush, and this one's a little bit more red, and that's okay. If I feel the need to make it peachier, I can just kind of dip in some of the... Oh, that's actually a really fun effect. I just kind of like plopped in a little bit of the raw sienna. Really nice. Okay. And then again, I'm just going to... Pull out some leaves here. Um, I'm not going to make these leaves. Well, I say that and then I do exactly what I'm about to say I'm not going to do. But I'm going to try not to make these leaves too large. Because this is a bit of a smaller flower here. Alright, now I got like the basis of these leaves. 
uh, and flowers down and now I'm going to actually go in with the wreath. Now I want the wreath to be a little less blue. I'm still going to add the blue just to kind of help it tie in together but I also want that effect that the wreath and the roses are a little different like as far as leaves are concerned. So I'm just like mixing all three of these colors together, the chromium blue, the viridian, and the rossi. And I just kind of until I'm getting a color that I like in here. Uh, and then we're going to go for it. So I'm just going to do a really simple pattern. I'm not going to go crazy with this. We're just going to kind of fill in some leaves, really. I mean, I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did with the rose petals and just filling in where I feel like it needs a leaf. And then after I do this layer, I am going to come back and I want this rose to be above, hold on. So I'm going to make it look like there's no leaves there. But I want this layer to be a little lighter. So I'm gonna come back over this later with darker colors. So I'm not too worried about it kind of like jumbling together right now because that is what it looks like. It looks very jumbled. Um, but that's okay. Um, it's kind of what I want because I am coming back over it. Now this is the reason I wanted the two colors to be different because I knew they were going to kind of intersect with the other leaves. So that is why I chose to use kind of a different color here. And again, I'm just literally putting pressure, lifting up, putting pressure, lifting up. And again, I am not a professional at this by any stretch of the imagination. So like, if I'm doing something wrong or it doesn't look good, feel free to do whatever you want. If you're following this as a tutorial, feel free to do whatever's comfortable for you. Um, that's just what's comfortable for me. All right, I'm going to make sure we shape that leaf out. Okie doke. They almost look like pine leaves. I kind of like that. I'm, I might just leave it as a pine leaf. The one thing that's throwing me off though is this is really thick and this is really not. So I may thicken this up by putting some more leaves behind this leaf. But I'll have to like paint them in individually so it makes sense. There, I think that looks a little better. I'm sure it'll fill out as I finish this. Um, and then I'm going to have to make more of this mix. And it's totally fine if it's not the exact same color, like if it's a little more yellow or a little more blue, because variation is what's going to make this look good as well. So yeah, um, I'm just, I'm really repeating the same thing. There's not much to talk about on this, but um, yeah, so I'm just kind of repeating the same thing over and over and making sure I'm making the leaves thick enough and not going over certain areas and going under certain areas. Like right here on this leaf, I'm gonna make sure I go under it. And then yeah, that's what the wreath looks like. At least for now, when it dries, I'm gonna come back and go over the other leaves with a little bit darker color. At least I might, I don't know, I'm kinda digging this look. This area right here didn't really get the memo, but I do really like how it came out. I think I might try to get that effect because it was of the little drippies. I don't know, I really like this. I feel like it doesn't need anything else except now the leaves on the roses are looking a little goofy, but I still think they're really pretty, so this one's really fun. I like this wreath a lot, oh my goodness. But yeah, today's video was really simple. Again, I just wanted to paint a little winter wreath and we're kind of moving into videos that I just 
feel like doing. I'm not really... I'm just having fun here on the channel, really, and I hope that you're sticking around for it. And if not, I'm, I apologize. I just want to have a good time here, and I want this to be like my little happy space. And it was really fun experimenting with these colors. I know I didn't use <laughs> two of the six colors. Uh, I used all of that Viridian. It's completely gone, so... But yeah, um, if you're interested in getting one of the original wreaths of the month, I will be making them custom, so if you're interested in that, head on over to my Patreon. There will be a link up here, uh, and that's for the entire month of November. If you become a patron of the $7 or higher tier, you will automatically get one of these whenever I ship out the November rewards. So if you're interested in that, go head on over there. If you're interested in my Fantastic Vampires coloring book, there will be a link up here as well. If you'd like to help me make that coloring book a success, I'd really appreciate it. We're 66% funded as of the time I am filming this. So we're almost there. We're two thirds of the way there and I'm very, very excited. And then we can work on the stretch goals, which are the extra fun things. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I really appreciate it. I hope you, are staying safe wherever you are and I hope that you are staying safe both mentally and physically um, and I hope that you do something that makes you happy like creatively and if you did follow along with me painting or whatever use the hashtag squidoodling with Katie I think I did that backwards whatever uh, over on Instagram I would really love to see what you're creating or just tag me I guess it doesn't really matter um, I'll see it either way but anyway I love you all so much again thank you so much for hanging out with me and until the next video toodaloo